Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited for today's video because I know that God's going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this. Stop ignoring God before it's too late. And I'm going to talk about two people who ignored the grace of God in their life. God showed them so much grace, so much mercy, so much compassion. Even though these men didn't deserve God's grace, God showed them the grace of God because they humbled themselves. But then three years after they humbled themselves in these two different stories that I'm going to speak about, three years after they humbled themselves in each of these men's lives, they forgot about the grace of God. They went against it and they paid the price. That's why I'm saying stop ignoring God before it's too late. It's a dangerous thing to ignore God. Let's talk about the first man. The first man is named Ahab. Now, that name might sound a little familiar because Ahab was the husband of a very notorious woman in the Bible. Ahab was the husband of Jezebel. Ahab was the king of Israel. Ahab married Jezebel. He was an evil man. The Bible says to that day, he was the most evil man of that time. The Bible says he set up idols for Baal, that false god. The name Baal in the Hebrew means Lord or Master. Instead of submitting to the Lord of the heavens, the God of the earth that created us, he was submitting to a false god and calling him Master. And something about Ahab that I want to point out very quickly, Ahab was a man of the flesh. He was a man of passions. He was a man of the lust of the eye. Whatever his eye desired, that's what would move him. And Jezebel knew that. So Jezebel, in order for her to control the whole country, the whole nation, she would just give Ahab what he wanted. And Ahab was quiet, like if he had a pacifier in his mouth. So Ahab was a man of the flesh, a man of passions. And he was a man that he ignored the grace of God because of his fleshy passions, because of his carnal desires. And let's learn from his mistake so that we will never do that. Stop ignoring God before it's too late. The Bible says that God speaks to Elijah the prophet and tells Elijah, Elijah, go and condemn Ahab. And the Bible says that Elijah goes and prophesies against Ahab. You see, the word of God is something good. The word gospel even means good news. Jesus came to save the world, not to condemn it. But I want to let you know, the Bible says that all those who receive Jesus Christ are not condemned. But those who reject the Son of God are reserved in condemnation. They're reserved for judgment. But when you receive Jesus, you're taken out of judgment and you're given eternal life. And something about the word of God, it's meant to bless, it's meant to deliver, it's meant to free, it's meant to give sight to the blind. In other words, it's meant to give you a whole new life. But sometimes the word of God can be used to condemn. And in Elijah's case, God tells him, go and prophesy not for Ahab, go and prophesy against Ahab. And he starts to prophesy all these tremendous, horrific, terrible disasters upon Ahab's life. But Ahab does something because we're talking about stop ignoring God. And remember, Ahab ignored the grace of God. So even though God prophesied terrible, horrific disasters in Ahab's life because of his disobedience and because of how he let Jezebel run the whole nation and set up all these false gods of Baal, God showed him grace because Ahab humbled himself. And the Bible says he was the most evil king to that date. And look what the Bible says here. 1 Kings 21, 25 to 29. There was none who sold himself to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord like Ahab, whom Jezebel, his wife, incited. He acted very abominably in going after idols as the Amorites had done, who the Lord cast out before the people of Israel. And when Ahab heard those words, remember the words of prophecy against him. And when Ahab heard those words, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth on his flesh and fasted and laid in sackcloth and went about dejectedly. In other words, he took off his kingly clothes and put on sackcloth. In the Bible, when you put on sackcloth, that's a form of humbleness. That's a form of taking off your pride, taking off your arrogance and putting on humility. And we should always be dressed with humility. The Bible says that God exalts the humble but brings low the prideful. The the Bible says that he has the humble close, but he has the prideful far away. Something that God hates is a prideful stare, an arrogant stare, the Bible says. So Ahab humbles himself. He's very evil. No one like him. He's the most evil, but he humbles himself and he begins to fast. You know what that fasting represents in Ahab's life? It represents a fasting from the passions of the flesh. You know, there's two types of fastings, and God prefers one over the other. There's the fasting of food, physical food, and that's a good fasting because it teaches you how to put God first. But then there's a spiritual fasting that the book of Isaiah says God prefers. Spiritual fasting is when you fast from the passions of the flesh. Because there's a lot of people, and you might know some people, who fast physical things, fast physical food or physical pleasures, but then they're still evil people or they're still carnal people. They're still living in sin. 
God prefers spiritual fasting over food fasting. He prefers you to fast from the passions of the flesh, fast from the things of the flesh, fast from the desires of the lustful eyes. God prefers it when you fast from those things. When you keep yourself away from sin, God prefers it when you fast like that. But when Ahab starts to fast, that's a symbol to God. Not only is he humbling himself, but he's also removing himself from the passions of the flesh. And look what God says. God notices that. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me. I will not bring disaster in his days, but in his son's days, I will bring the disaster upon his house. God says, man, because he humbled himself, I'm not going to bring the disaster on his days because he humbled him. He tells Elijah, Elijah, did you see? Did you notice how he humbled himself? I'm not going to bring disaster in his days, but in his son's days. Now, people might say, man, but that's still pretty bad because now his son, his son's going to have disaster in his life. No, not necessarily, because his son can learn the lesson from his father. If the son also humbles himself, God won't bring disaster in his days either. You see, that's the kind of God we serve. We deserve disaster. We deserve to pay the price for all our sins. But because we receive his son, Jesus Christ, and we humble ourselves in his presence, he does it. But look what Ahab does three years later. And remember, I'm going to talk about another man that three years later, he also forgot about the grace of God. But let's finish talking about Ahab. After three years, Ahab goes back to those carnal desires. Ahab goes back to those passions of the flesh. And he remembers a piece of land that the enemy has. And instead of just leaving it alone, instead of just leaving it to them, you know, let me tell you something. Some battles, some fights, it's okay to lose them. God's forgiven you so much. God's had so much mercy and grace in your life. You don't always got to fight every battle. You don't always have to win every fight. Just leave it alone and let God handle it. You don't need to fight every battle. You don't need to fight every war. Just leave it alone. Let God fight your battles. God is showing you so much grace, so much mercy. Don't let your pride get in the way. Well, Ahab, he lets his pride get in the way. He starts to fight a war. He has no business fighting a battle. He has no business fighting. And look what happens here. He was already promised that no disaster was going to happen to him. But because he went back to his carnal desires, went back to his carnal passions, look what happens here. 1 Kings 22, 34 and 35. This is how Ahab's life was ended. But a certain man drew his bow at random. Ahab's in this battle he had no business to be in. But a certain man drew his bow at random and struck the king of Israel. Who's the king of Israel? Ahab. And struck the king of Israel between the scale of the armor and the breastplate. Therefore, he said to the driver of his chariot, this is Ahab, he's hit. The arrow hit him right in the perfect spot. He tells him, turn around and carry me out of the battle, for I am wounded. And the battle continued that day, and the king was propped up in his chariot facing the Syrians until that evening when he died. See, Ahab had no business dying in that battle. God had already shown him so much mercy, so much grace. But because he went back to his old lifestyle, because he started listening to his old desires and the passions of the flesh. You see, the book of James says this. When you're tempted, don't say you're being tempted by God because God cannot be tempted with evil and he does not tempt anyone with evil. The book of James says when you're tempted, you're tempted by your own carnal desires, your old passions of the flesh. You see, Ahab went back to the old passions of the flesh. Ahab went back to his old carnal desires. He was already promised grace and mercy and God had seen how he humbled himself. But because Ahab went back, because he ignored the grace of God, he was killed in a battle that he didn't need to even be in in the first place. And I want to tell you, don't ignore God before it's too late. Don't ignore the grace of God. Stay in God's grace. Stay in God's forgiveness. Don't go back to your old passions of the flesh. Don't go back to your old lifestyle. I want to read you about this other man. His name is Shimi. That name might sound familiar because Shimi, he was the man that was cursing David when David was living his kingdom because Solomon, his own son, was trying to be after his life. David had to flee and Shimi was standing on a hill throwing rocks at David and calling him a dog and calling him all kind of curse words and calling all type of judgments against him and saying that David was an evil man and this is happening because he's so evil. Instead of Shimi helping David in his time of trouble, he's standing against David in his times of trouble and he's speaking all type of horrible things and judgments that he has no business speaking now David at that time forgives Shimei but later when Solomon the son of David takes over the kingdom David tells Solomon hey 
Don't forget about Shimi. He treated me very bad in my times of sorrow, in my time of pain. He treated me very bad. Don't forget about Shimi. And look what happens here. Shimi is another man that forgot about the grace of God. Look what the Bible says. Then the king sent and summoned Shimi and said to him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem and dwell there, and do not go out from there to any place. For on the day you go out and cross the brook Kidron, know for certain that you shall die. He gives him an opportunity. He says, look, you treated my dad very bad. I'm going to let you build a house in Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem. That's a city. Don't leave Jerusalem because the day you leave Jerusalem, he says, I'm going to end you. That's what he tells him. The day you leave Jerusalem, I'm going to end you. And he's telling him this because of the way he treated his father, David. Now, this is very important for us. Very, very important because the name Jerusalem in the Bible means city of peace, city of peace. And who is the king of the new Jerusalem in heaven? Jesus Christ. This is very important and it represents something big for Christians today. You see, by Shimmy staying in Jerusalem, that's a representation of Christians today staying in Christ. You see, the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter eight, there is now therefore no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. You have to be in Christ. When you're in Christ, when you're in the perimeter of Christ, there's no more condemnation for you. And that's exactly what Solomon is telling Shimei. Stay in Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem. Don't leave the perimeter of Jerusalem. Because if you leave the perimeter of Jerusalem, your own life's going to be on your own head. He's telling them, don't leave. What is God telling us today? Don't leave my son Jesus. Stay in the grace of my son Jesus stay in the grace of God. Don't leave that perimeter and go back to your old lifestyle. But look what happens to Shimei. Same thing like Ahab. Three years later, in Shimei's life, three years later, he forgot about the grace of God after three years. And look what happens here. And Shimei said to the king, what you say is good. As my Lord the king has said, so will your servant do. So Shimei lived in Jerusalem many days. He said, hey, that sounds like a good deal for me. Salvation, that sounds like, like a great deal. Forgiveness of sins, that sounds like a great deal. But after three years, look what happens. But it happened at the end of three years that two of Shimei's servants ran away to Achish, son of Makkah, king of Gath. And when it was told Shimei, behold, your servants are in Gath, Shimei arose and saddled his donkey. And he was acting like a donkey too, by the way. He saddled a donkey and he was acting like a donkey. He saddled his donkey and went to Gath to Achish to seek his servants. Shimei went and brought his servants from Gath. And when Solomon was told that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath, he returned. The king sent and summoned Shimei and said to him, did I not make you swear by the Lord and solemnly warn you, saying no for certain? That on the day you go out to any place, whatever, you shall die. And you said to me, what you say is good, I will obey. Why then have you not kept your oath to the Lord and the command with which I commanded you? The king also said to Shimei, you know in your heart all the harm that you did to David my father. So the Lord will bring back on you your harm on your own head. Shimei was given grace. Shimei was given mercy. Solomon said, look, stay in Jerusalem. I'm not going to do nothing to you. Just stay in there. Stay in the city of peace. That's a representation for us. Stay in the grace of God. Stay in your salvation. Stay in living for the Lord. Stay in that. Don't go back to your old passions. Don't go back to your old desires. Don't go back to living after the lust of the flesh. Shimei forgets about it. And after three years, he leaves Jerusalem. And Solomon finds out. And Solomon says, didn't I tell you? And didn't you promise me? And didn't you give an oath to the Lord? And Solomon fulfilled his part of the oath and finished Shimei. Shimei and Ahab were shown so much grace, so much mercy. But what took them out? The lust of the eye, the passions of the flesh. They left where God had placed them, that beautiful place where God had placed them, that position of grace, that position of mercy that God had given them, a forgiveness. They left it. And it wasn't God's fault. It was their fault. Let me tell you something. God's going to keep sitting on the throne no matter who listens or who doesn't listen. God's going to continue to sit on the throne. So it's in our benefit that we obey God. It's for our benefit that we're obedient to his word. Now, this video is not meant to scare or fright anybody, but it's meant to make us wake up. Stay in the grace of God. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Stay in the Lord. Stay in his grace. Don't let the lust of the eye, the desires of the flesh pull you out. That's just the enemy. The enemy wants to drag you out of, out of God's grace. Don't let the enemy drag you out of God's grace. Stay in the grace of God. That's where God's grace is. 
That's where God's mercy is. That's where God's blessings are. I hope this video was a great blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor, subscribe, and also turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. I post two videos a week, and I know that there will be a great encouragement to your life. And I also want to thank everyone who's given super thanks. Super thanks are a great blessing to me and my family. And if you want to show your appreciation for this video, you can give a super thanks, and that will be greatly appreciated. It will be a great blessing to my life. Thank you. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Stop ignoring God before it's too late.